So um, back when I first started the business, it's a crazy mad dash, right? And nobody ever fully prepares you for what it means to start a business from scratch and doing all the things. And that's what we were doing. And I was making the soaps and my brother, who's a very talented web designer and consultant and all of the awesome things, marketing guru, he's awesome. Check him out. Horton's are, I'll link him below. Anyway, he's building this website and I'm making the soaps for the website. I'm writing copy for the website, all of these things. And we got to the point where it was time to make the social media pages for the business, really. And I was tired and had been just in the thick of all of it, just making the soaps and doing all the things when it was time to make the Facebook page. And so it says, you know, pick your, your Facebook handle. And I, you know, tongue in cheek typed in because I had been working nonstop for like 10 days straight and probably had not showered in like five. I don't even use soap as my Facebook handle. And uh, there's the story for the Facebook handle and why it is what it is. But the reason I'm telling you that story today is because I feel that that is a whole mood for me today because, wow, we have been busy. And I don't remember the last time that I saw a hot shower. And um, I would love to be using the soaps that I am making for you today. And I'm going to tell you all about them in just a minute. But before I do, Hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. I'm super glad you can't smell me through the camera. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And most of the time I use said soapy things, but yeah, no, it's been nuts. And it is every season and every season it just gets a little bit more nuts. And so you are here for day 249 of 365 days of soap. And we are making a soap that I might actually need to use just to scrub off multiple layers of God knows what after this crazy, crazy holiday season, we are making new loofah soaps. Now, we're doing the loofah soaps a little bit different today. So I have shown you the loofah soaps, or rather Georgia May did several months ago, uh, back in the summertime when we were doing the summer line and they're all citrusy and they looked beautiful and that's awesome. I'm actually showing you, well, a couple new things today. Because this is the busy season and it's really hard to actually like sneak in just the little bitty bitty, like the little bitty batches of soap to do a video into the actual all the soap making that we need to make i'm showing you a bigger batch form um, of the loofah soaps and you know a way that you can effectively for soapers split your batch if you know that you have the same oils and butters and everything going into a recipe but you want to scent them different things or color them different things use different clays this is how and in addition to the uh, loofah soaps the new loofah soaps for the winter line um, we will be using activated charcoal and red clays and bentonite clays and new kind of more masculine scent blends for this so i'm actually i should stop talking about it here because i tell you all of that in the video probably so let's go check it out so quick prep for this one but we are actually doing four loofahs in one video and this is actually how I do the majority of my soaps, right? Because like for my shave bars, the oil formulation is exactly the same. For my loofahs, the oil formulation is exactly the same. So I just create big giant pots of them and then split them accordingly throughout the molds to scent them and do the things so I can make essentially all four of whatever I'm making 
at the same time, which is a much smarter way of soaping than, you know, just doing everything individually if you are working with the same recipe. And for the loaf of soaps, we are definitely working with the same recipe. We've got uh, coconut oil, but basu oil, that's 50% of the batch. 25% of it is olive oil, and the remaining 25% is, uh, ooh, a hemp seed for this one, actually. There's a lot of hemp seed in this one because I really wanted to put a lot of hemp seed in this because it's the winter loofah, and I want a really big bubble, but I also want it to be, you know, helping out with any sort of, like, really itchy skin concerns, dry skin, that sort of thing. So that's what we're rolling with. For this, let's go on to how I split this bad boy. So again, yes, if I have to make four different scent blends of the same product, effectively, I just take like the size of whatever mold I'm going to be pouring into and multiply that by four. So I know that the PVC pipe that I'm pouring into for the Lufa soaps, they hold 55 ounces. So I am now splitting my batches into 55 ounce. I've made a batch that's 55 ounce times four. and. I am then just splitting, I just I just poured off the 55 ounces that I need and I have the appropriate, that one has the activated charcoal um, as well as this really yummy blend. So it is a uh, cherry and sandalwood, which actually becomes a really cool masculine blend with all of that, but it's still delightful because cherry and activated charcoal because detoxing the skin is fun. And, you know, I almost never put black soaps in my line. So yeah, I just split off the batch, just the 55 ounces that will fill that mold, and then I do my thing. Now with loop soaps, these have been soaking for about a day to really soften them up. And then I always, with my loofahs, before I pour, I dip them into the actual the soap batter and then pour around it. It's a messier process for sure, but I have found that the loofah better absorbs the soap and you therefore get more soap on every you know loofah as a result so yes I soak them and yes I then you know kind of roll them around in the batter before I do the pouring over them now these loofahs are a little bit different for this because again I am changing up the oil blend that I used uh, that I used the last time that we did this or Georgia May made them rather because it's the winter months, because I want to focus more on dry skin, and I want to ensure that in focusing on the dry skin, we don't end up with any um, kind of sad and lackluster lather. So up the coconut and put in a bunch of hemp seed, and it's delightful. And uh, also with my loofah soaps, I usually do them in single, in two colors. And so this is a what what does it look like when you use very big bold colors and you just use one of them? How does the loofah stand out within you know the inside of the batch? And that's what you're going to find out in the cut and all the things. And I'm also playing with more masculine scent blends for this because I actually had a sudzer you know a bajillion years ago at this point uh, ask, have you ever thought about doing masculine scents for the loofahs? And honestly, I never have ever. And this guy right here, the orange one. So again. I put everything into the scent blend. The color, the clays, the everything goes into each of the scent blend pots. So this particular one has a red French clay into the scent blend itself. And the scent blend for this one is a eucalyptus and cedarwood. So another masculine blend. And yet, yeah, I just really have not ever thought to do masculine blends in my loofahs because I figured more girls than boys were using it and I guess that's not necessarily the case and it makes sense because I actually whenever I have a loofah in the in the uh, shower which I always have a loofah soap in the shower it goes a lot faster than I would expect it to go if it's just me using it so I actually asked Mr. Soap and Clay after the Sudzer sent me a message and he's like oh yeah no I use that thing all the time oh cool so you like it too and so yeah, we're, we're focusing on some more masculine blends for the uh, winter line for the Lufa soaps, which is super cool. And again, this one is a eucalyptus and cedar wood, which is really nice. It's a good blend. It has a, you know, it's the, the bright kind of biting notes of the eucalyptus, as well as very, very beautiful kind of sexy notes from the cedar wood. 
But I have found, see that, when it's doing its weird thing, it's kind of rising a little bit. I have found whenever I put eucalyptus in my um, blends, it rices. But you have seen me cut riced soap a number of times, and you see that it does not impact the finished product. So that's good. Now, again, this is... This is where it's at, guys. Like, this is how anybody... It's actually an interesting thing, and because and it depends from uh, country to country, really, as far as soap makers go. I have, for the most part, every soap maker I come in contact with in the United States, they, like, make individual batches when they have, again, like, a loofah line. It's all the same oil blend. You're just swapping out the scent blends they will create four individual batches. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. But people that live overseas um, in the UK or in Europe, because they actually have stricter regulations as far as how they, uh, they have to get like approval for their soap recipes, they tend to have fewer of them. And so this is kind of a no brainer way to make soaps in large batch form um, for people living in like the UK. But American soapers, I don't know don't don't make your job harder than it has to be for sure like if you have again it you've already figured out the formulation you love your oil blend you know you're going to use it for all four or six or whatever different varieties of this particular soap just make a giant batch and you know weigh it out accordingly and that's what we're doing here. So this blue one here is actually blueberry pancakes. And I don't really know if that's a, a masculine scent or not. I just know that I loved the blueberry pancakes that I put into the tea swizzle bar, into the fearless bar. And I wanted to use it again because it's really, really yummy and it makes me happy. So I thought that that's a good winter thing too, because I eat pancakes exponentially more in the winter time than I do in the summertime. How about you? Do you? I don't do pancakes in the summertime. I don't, I generally don't do breakfast ever, but you know, when I do breakfast, it's during the winter time because I feel like I need to put a little bit of meat on my very skinny bones during the winter just to survive because it's cold. And also, you know, even if you're doing like breakfast at, you know, dinner, breakfast for dinner or whatever, I don't do breakfast for dinner in the form of pancakes in the middle of summer. I do cereal as breakfast for dinner in the middle of summer but that's mostly because I just don't want to cook and cold cereal is delicious at all times but yes so this actually the sample and it turned it all weird I hope it goes normal in the it's supposed to be blue see how it went green I put in the scent blend and this guy has pale and clay in it in addition to the blueberry pancakes and the blue mica and it's green. It should go blue. I didn't notice it being a problem with uh, the Fearless Bar, but also we were coloring the Fearless Bar a bajillion different colors, and the blueberry pancakes thing was just one piece of like five different blends that went into that bar. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, these are, it's a very easy process for these loofahs and again you're going to get to see what it looks like to have a solid color loofah with some bright colors and you know all of all of the things now this last one that we are doing is what is it now i've forgotten oh no, no, no i shouldn't forget this one so this is actually a caramel tobacco blend that i really love and almost put into the rat pack line and then decided not to because this particular blend tends to accelerate trace but it's okay if it accelerates trace in this regard and it's one of the reasons why I left it for the very end because I was probably going to be working with a thick batter anyway but since it's just a single color and I'm not doing anything super you know complicated with it and as you can see it's a very quick process to you know get the loofahs in and pour it in and whatever it doesn't take a long time I thought even if it accelerates, we're all good. Everything will still be fine. We won't have any pockets, any problems of any areas of concern within the finished product. So I decided to use this for the loofah soaps because again, I really love the blend and I love how it's bubbling while it's all doing its thing. 
always, always bang down whenever you're putting a loofah into your soaps. So make sure you bang your mold down a lot to release any sort of air pockets and make sure that you're really getting soap into every little crevice in your loofahs. Otherwise, you know, you have the holes and it sucks and that's not fun and then you're like shortchanging your customers. And for my customers that are watching, for my sudsters that are watching, I would never shortchange you. So we do the thing, even though it splattered right there and did that thing. But that's all good. And yeah, so this is not a, uh, it, it's super not a complicated process by any stretch of the imagination. Now these guys will be sea popped uh, and then I will freeze them to get them out of the PVC because that's just, it's just what has to happen when you get, when you, when I use PVC. I mean, you can use sodium lactate in your PVC mold column things to make it release from the PVC easier, but I don't like using extra things if it's only for the one thing, right? If I'm only putting it in just to ensure that it releases from the mold easier, I'm like, nah, I won't do it. And so I freeze these. I will seep pop these and then I will freeze them and then we will get them out and we will cut all four of these beauties, you know, tomorrow or in a couple days. We'll see. And on to the cut of these beautiful loofah soaps. They are absolutely gorgeous. I love all the cool things that we did with all the different uh, clays and activated charcoals and all the things with these ones. And this is a hand cut for me. I don't trust that the loofah inside is going to not break my cutter. And I've already broken my cutter like way too many times, right? Like it's quite a bit. So when I cut my loofah soaps, I use a serrated knife. I think this is a bread knife that I got Oh God. So I got this weird knife kit thing. Like, I don't know, back in the early 2000s. And I think it's a miracle blade. I think that's what it's called. But the, the knives themselves, those are cool. Yeah, those are beautiful. So that's the activated charcoal with the, the dark kiss in there. Absolutely delightful. Love that one. Cherries and all the jazz. Beautiful. See, that's gorgeous. But yeah, like the miracle blades themselves, they totally sucked. They were not fun for me at all. But you know, the this bread knife, it's very handy to cut loofahs with because nice serrated, you know, whatever, all the things. And yeah, so this one actually, all of the pouring into the molds like this into the PVC. Now what I do with these after they are sea popped, I then shove them in the freezer for a couple hours to get really hard and frozen. And then I take them out and I just drop them on the ground a whole bunch which is very therapeutic, you know? And uh, the soap then releases really easily from the mold and just slides right out. But I want to make sure that they are all, this is beautiful too. I kind of look like a banana, love that. But I want to make sure that they are all no longer frozen before I cut them. For what reason, really with this, since I have to use the, you know, the knife, there really is not a reason, it's just, when I am doing a PVC, you know, soap, I definitely make sure that it is no longer frozen before I run it through my soap cutter because I don't want the soap cutter to be broken and all the things. But yeah, so these bars, again, they are very beautiful without having to do any swirls for the soaps. You just let the loofah be the contrast, essentially. And all of these new, you know, Lupa soaps, they have the cool masculine or unisex scents to them, which I am definitely here for. And yeah, it's it's not, it's kind of a simple process, right? When you are making multiple scent blends, scent types, and working with a, you know, you're working with the same oil for all of the soaps that you're making. I mean, just make a big batch and split it accordingly. That's, that's the easiest way to do it. So, this one is actually interesting. It will continue to um, darken and it will ultimately end up a different color, more of like a greenish brown when it's all said and done, just because, you know, this is kind of fresh and you can see at the bottom there, the kind of browning that's there on the, the very end bar up on the upper left there, that it will eventually go kind of brown. But for now, it's super cool and the middle loofah will always stay that color. So. It's beautiful. I I love the new loofah soaps. I love the loofah soaps in general, but these ones I'm definitely happy to keep in the line for the next couple months through the winter line for the winter months because they are very fitting for this time of the year. And you know, that's awesome. 
And yeah, that's that's that for the, the beautiful new Lufa soaps. All the clays, all the activated charcoals, all the things. That's day 249, and they are gorgeous. I don't know, did I tell you all that in the video? I'm not really sure at this point. I, I need a nap and a shower and a bath. Probably bath and then shower, because that's always how I do it. I take a bath and then I go to the shower. And now all I'm thinking about is really, really wanting to do both of those things. So I'm going to keep this short. Those were the Lufa soaps. They are amazing. I love the new dark color and how beautiful the contrast is between the dark colors and the, you know, the Lufa that's inside. So you can totally do that. You don't need to do swirls. You don't need to do all those things. You still get a stunning bar of soap that has a beautiful, awesome, natural Lufa inside of it. And that's awesome. The new scent blends. Yes love these i am so excited to be releasing these to the world and they are now released to the world or to the united states because my website's still weird with the uh, international shipping things so united states here's some lufa soaps uh, yeah you can find them at soapandclay.com if you are interested in more soapy antics and seeing if i manage to shower tomorrow you should subscribe to the channel that would be awesome and you can come back and make fun of me as you watch my hair get progressively dirtier and my eyes get progressively more tight. Tis the season. And I, I, I do. I actually do love this time of the year. It's just a lot. So yeah, for those of you who are already subscribed, I think I said subscribe. That's the whole point of the thing. Subscribe. For those of you who are subscribed, thank you for being subscribed. My brain is fried and um, I know that you guys will find it, I don't know, humorous or endearing or something and come back and see me tomorrow and for that reason that's why i love you so much and i'm proud to call you one of my sudsers i really am done for today all of this talk about baths and showers i'm gonna i'm gonna get that in today i just have like i just have like 14 more batches of soap to make it's not i'm good i can do both yeah so i will uh see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of 365 days of soap bye